Hey, hey, shit, gang. Uh, Crunk Chocolate here. I am doing, this is another part of our mid-season review with the top seven clubs. Figure we could connect with each other, see what it's like up here in the top seven while we're looking down at all those other clubs in the Premier League. You wish. Ah, well, I'm here talking Newcastle, kicking it with the Geordies, the Magpies. I got on the homie, John Sinclair TV. How's it going, homie? Say hi, Shady Gang. Big up my guy, Punk. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, baby. Yeah, how, yeah, how are you? How are you? How are things? Things um, are good at the minute. My child's going well. Things are going well. And yes, it's going fantastic. Happy. All yeah, good in the hood, baby. Let's go. It, uh, you're, are you... You uh, are you going to a match? Are you going because you go to a lot of the Newcastle matches? So when when's the next? What's the next game you're going to? The next one for me, I'm going to Chelsea tomorrow night, which is um, just over 24 hours time. I'll be traveling to London if I get finished on time, of course, but I will get there. And I'm supposed to be going to Luton. Kind of didn't get a ticket. Nottingham Forest. I don't think I'm going to make it to that game, but definitely going to Liverpool. Sunderland, no chance. Man City, I will be. And hopefully Aston Villa away from home. So, yeah. So, and people call me a fake fan. And if people think I'm fake, think again. Because you know what? I'm a true supporter. And if you don't like it, cry more. Yeah, they, cry more. Hey, right. Let's cry go. Uh, well, let's start the show off with talking about where Newcastle is sitting in the table. Uh, sixth place it kind of been a little up and down as of recently i can't really say too much because city also has been struggling but i want to hear your thoughts at uh if you look at the table sixth place that's not terrible but how are you feeling about the season so far do you feel six is a good position for you um <clears throat> despite some um, with half the team out in a minute in time Definitely, because yes, our waveform has been fantastic. I'm not going to lie, because we get beat, not just beat, but get beat proper like Tottenham and Everton and Bournemouth as well. And listen, at the end of the day, I mean, we're still playing exciting football, but when you lose key players like Sven Bockman, Sean Longstaff, Callum Wilson, and it was Nick Porpoise out now, unfortunately, Joel Willock, mm -hmm. and when you lose key players like that, then it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard because at the end of the day, we played six games straight with the same starting lineup, and they look absolutely knackered, absolutely knackered. And when you run out of steam, then it's so hard to take because it's all about the fitness and this and that and other. But do you know what? I'm so proud of um, the Castle United and the squad and Eddie Howe as well because they give us everything. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go over that tree. I just don't think I'm allowed to with the Newcastle fans on social media. But the players we've got, absolutely brilliant and where we at. But we need to fix our waveform very, very quickly because at the minute, we're quite weak in there. Yeah. It, I think, that, like you said, with the injuries, it's, it's a little tough maybe to answer this question because maybe the answer is someone who's injured at this moment. In American sports, we have a award called the MVP, Most Valuable Player. It usually is just given to the most popular player, but I want to use this uh, correctly. Who is the player on your squad that if you lose them, everything falls apart? Who so far in this first half of the season has been your most valuable player, your MVP? Right, that is a really, really good question for me. I'm not going to say Lewis Miley yet because he's still just coming to the team, but it's been really, really good. Uh, Nick Pope has been fantastic again, makes saves after saves after saves. I mean, he's been brilliant. Um, you look at the back four, for me, Livermento comes in, has done a fantastic job. Defending well mm -hmm. going forward is fantastic. Really, really is. Um, Sven Botman, when he plays, he does spend bottom things. He's defending really well. So brings a calmness to the back four. Um, Joanna Sells, 
has come in, has done really well. Yeah. But I still want him gone at the end of the season. I can't lie. But for me, this season, <laughs> <laughs> well, the things that you've got to, you have to upgrade to better defend that sort of thing. Like, you know, I love Jamal Sells, don't get us wrong, but he's out of contract at the end of the season. But for me, I think he needs moving on. I mean, we need someone who's going to come in and give us some different midfield. For me, Bruno has been outstanding the last few games. Joel Linton, a number six, brilliant. He really has. Lewis Manley, what a spot prospect this guy. He scored on Saturday. Lovely finish. Up front, Anthony Gordon, Miguel Miron, and Alexander Isaac, and Callum Wilson. For me, I'm going to go Joel Linton because this guy so far has been absolutely fantastic. Just gets better, better and better. I mean, He's a 90-minute player. He covers every single blade of grass. When he came to Newcastle, 40 million quid, right? Mm. What a waste of money. Playing up front, I think it was misunderstood when he came to Newcastle. I'm not going to lie, misunderstood. Yeah, there was always a player in there. Yeah, I thought to myself, get rid of this guy. Get rid of this guy because at the end of the day, he ain't going to make it in the Premier League. But guess what, though, Kunk? Get what? Guess what? Yeah, this guy has been amazing. Tackles in, trying force midfield. He's won a great goal against Milan. I did see it get beat. But for me, I'm going to go with the big guy, John Linton, because he's brilliant. And obviously, 27 years of age now. And he's got 18 months left on his contract. I honestly truly believe we need to tie this guy down. Otherwise, someone else is going to come in for him. Yeah, he's he's class. Uh, I, would, I would like to believe you're going to re-sign him because... There's this, with the new money that Newcastle has received and the steps that they are trying to make to be a, come a traditional power, you're going to have those players that you had before all of the money came or right before the money came. You're going to have to make some tough decisions on if they need to stay, if they need to go, what they mean to the club. Joel, Joel Alton, he does represent like the Newcastle way, like the, the mindset, the, the gritty, the tough, uh, not backing down. I enjoy watching him on your squad. The fans seem to very much enjoy who he is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, you would think that they would hold on to him. How do you feel about Tonali losing him? How big has that been of a blow? Um, for me, Tenali, when he first came to the club, I thought it was really exciting because I love Italian football and I know what this guy is all about. I mean, he is a lot action midfield player. He can play wide, he can play in midfield, he can pass the ball. And his feet kicks are fantastic when it comes off. But because of this betting scandal, betting and bet he did, getting banned till the end of the season is a massive blow to Newcastle United. And you know what? I feel that he would have kicked on. He would have definitely kicked on because he badly missed in the midfield. Yes, started well against Villa, first game, and then he had like okay-ish games and that gets like a five or six out of ten for me. But he keeps getting subbed. Maybe the pace of the Premier League is catching him up at this minute in time. But he's away from the game now. And next season, we're going to see the best of Tonali. But one thing I'm going to say, Milan needs to be blamed for it because, let's be real, I just think um, it's just disgusting. It really is um, what happened there with the um, better in Italy. But, oh, man, ban for what, eight months, end of the season? We could do with it, man. But I hope next season everything is sorted. Come on the pitch, play your football, and then just forget what's happened. But with Ban and Missin, I think he's a cracking player to Nali. He really, really is. He makes things happen in the middle. And... If it was for the Bettany being in the squad now. Oh, most definitely. Uh, who on your squad so far this season do you feel has been uh, struggling? Uh, they've been lackluster or haven't met your expectations? Um. Well, I hope social media is not going to listen to this, by the way. Um, I'm going to say I, I love Mickey Almeida. I really do love Mickey. Last season, he was outstanding. He was an 8 out of 10 last season, 8.5. This season, it's gone back to the old Miggy. 
I mean, I'm not going to, I don't want to go on hard on him because I love him. I do love him. But on Judge Anon's performance, yeah, it's just, he's predictable. He has got a right foot, yeah. And when he shoots, it goes over the bar. And I look at the first goal against Tottenham when he allowed a doggy to run into the box and score um, the opening goal. Maybe should have been with him, and he wasn't. Very disappointed in that. But I think I want to see Miggy back to his Atlanta days. Yeah, if we can get that back from him, that we're going to have a crack and play. But the guy's 29. He's at his peak now, yeah? And time is running out for this guy because mm. I want him to do more and more and more. I mean, I look at great wingers like um, Doku, Saka, players like that as well. Um, Holmin Song. Um, Kuliseski, Mo Salah, Miggy could be the answer. He could be a fantastic winger. But I want to see him play on the left side and play Anthony Gordon on the right side. Do you know what I mean? So I think Miggy mm. would need to step up because at the end of the day, we definitely need a right side midfield player for sure. Um, if you have a look at it as well, I think, um, oh, it's a hard one really. Like, do you know what I mean? I think there's the, Martin de Braca, since he's came in, I'm not being funny, but the last two games before the Fulham, he's been poor. He really has been poor. Seven goals conceded. Make that nine goals conceded the last three games. That ain't good. Do you know what I mean? But mm. he's got to show more. Mm -hmm. But yeah. to be fair, clean sheet, there are a lot to do. He needs to improve as well. But other than that, it's just Miggy, really. It's just Miggy needs to improve a bit more. I mean, Isaac. I mean, I love him, but he's got to do a little bit more as well. He looks knackered as well when he comes, when he plays. Do you know what I mean? But that's not his fault because Callum Wilson's been out injured and it's the workload's getting too much for him. Do you know what I mean? But other than that, it's just mm -hmm. not a lot, really. I think, oh, tough, like, you know, Lascelles, he's done all right, but he needs to concentrate a bit more. And um, I just can't figure anything, really, apart from that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did great. I think you did great. Uh, well, let's talk about the your manager, Eddie Howe, because everyone was very gung-ho on him, very high on him, especially after last season, even at the beginning of this current season, while things were going well, the Tenali betting scandal dropped, and now all these injuries seem to be hitting. And, some people are complaining about Eddie Howe and what he's doing or what he's not doing. But to me, I don't really know how you can blame him because it's really tough to get anything going, like you said, with so many key players either gone or uh, gone because of betting, a betting and injuries. So seeing all this and how the season has gone, how are you currently feeling about Eddie Howe? Do you know what? I'm, I love Eddie Howe. What he's done to this football club, right? He came in second from bottom, got us 11th, and then the following season, he got us Champions League. So he's done absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, I wanted him here for a long time because I think this guy's going to be brilliant. I mean, he'll just get better and better. Yeah. I mean, the fans love him, but some of the fans want him gone because he ain't a big enough name. And the fact of the matter is, right? I mean, he has got a plan B. That is the thing. My worry is, other managers could be thinking, he has got a plan B. We're always attacking all the time. Yeah, that's how we play. He even admitted this as well and said that, listen, at the end of the day, we just so we're going to play and we're not going to change it. That's it. But all the social medias, all the Eddie Howe out, we did need to give the head a shake and keep shaking your head until it drop off. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie to you, but... yeah. You have to ask yourself the question, who's going to come in and take his place? He's going to do a better job. Joseph Mourinho? No thanks. No thanks. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, he's won trophies where he's been, but he'll run the Europa Conference and Roma in a minute. And then the way he acted last season against Seville in the Europa League, it was a disgrace, an utter disgrace. I will not have him at my football club. There's just no way, can it? And yeah, it, he would. He would. He would just, in my opinion, yes. If you brought in Mourinho, you would potentially start winning, and your defense would shore up. But 
inevitably, when the scoring stops happening, the winning stops happening, nobody tears down the team mm. better than Mourinho. And okay. with what Newcastle's trying to build, I just don't think the risk is worth the reward. No, totally agree. And you know what it is, right? I mean, oh, I mean, if, um, if Joseph came to Newcastle as manager, yes, he's a winner. Yes, he's still a winner. Yes, he's a good manager. But if I was Lewis Miley or Sean Longstaff, I said, get yourself a new club because at the end of the day, right, Joseph's not picking you. He is not picking you because he'll ruin your career before he even starts. Do you know what I mean? And I'll tell you one thing, yeah. I mean, I don't think our fans will be happy at all whatsoever. I mean, who's going to play for him? Joe Linton will? Bruno will? But he can be a bit defensive, do you know what I mean? But for me, I wouldn't have Josie. I'd, give, I'd take Eddie out all day long. Love it, love it. We have the transfer window coming up very soon. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure with your injuries and financially where you're sitting, are there any rumors about Eddie Howe and company trying to bring in any players? Um, well, we definitely need another midfielder if we can, like a CGM. We definitely need um, a goalkeeper and we need a right side of midfield and we definitely need a striker, maybe a defender as well. Um, for me, I'm hearing that Calvin Phillips uh, has been linked with us. But apparently, according to Talk Sport, he's, um, they've been opening talks, uh, Juventus open talks with Calvin Phillips. But yeah. I don't think Pep's going to let Calvin go to Newcastle. It's just no way because they probably think we're a rival. And I can understand why that um, Calvin Phillips could be going to UV instead. Um, we definitely need a centre, centre back. That guy from Leverkusen, um, I can't remember his name, is in. Apache, whatever his name is, I'm finding out his name in a bit, but that guy is a really, really good defender. His defensive partner as well. Um, from a, oh, God, he's an African guy. He is brilliant. He really is. So I'll go for one of his defenders from Leverkusen. Whether they're going to let him oh, go. Oh, Jonathan Tarr. Yeah. What's, what's his name? Jonathan Tarr. I tell Jonathan you, he's Tarr. really good. He's, he's really good. He's a really good defender defender he really is but i think it's going to be un ungettable as long as buying lemon cues in the top of the league the bundesliga but we definitely need a defender 100 yeah. percent up front i'll go for that guy from stuttgart and Gnabry. not Gnabry. Uh, he plays by a minute um the guy who plays in stuttgart saying, but you know what i mean but i'll find out his name in a bit as well and um, it'd be about 17 million quid buyout clause as well, but apparently Milan wants as well. But listen, at the end of the day, I think it's going to be tough. We definitely need in the market for someone. But Calvin Phillips is a prime target, mm. but he'd be off to you, Vic. Yeah, the whole thing about, um, oh, uh, yeah, Jurassic is the other player. The thing I would love to actually see Calvin Phillips at Newcastle. It'd be an easy transition. He'd be in England. That'd be good for him. And what also is like most important or key, I think, is Newcastle have the money to actually pay for the player. With KP's tie to Juventus, yeah. Juventus not only don't want to get they they say that they won't buy him after. And they're even trying to make City pay most of his transfer fee, of his uh, weekly fees because Juventus is just so broke. I don't understand the reasoning of sending him there, and it's just like us having to send Cancelo to Barcelona. I'm sure there was a team out there who would have paid whatever money for a player like Jao Cancelo, except for we keep helping these broke teams, and it frustrates me to no end. We need to just send him to Newcastle who can pay up the money. We loan him for the first half of the season. You pay us whatever once you hit Champions League. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I also, I would like to see it because I, I would still like to see Calvin Phillips play in the league. I don't want him to go to Italy. All right. Great. 
I totally agree. I mean, at the end of the day, I think um, where you, if fans are staying in England, that's another matter. But I hope that um, if he's available, Calvin Phillips will go by. He does play enough games, but he'll do really, 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 really well. And I hope he does. But um, the player I want to get as well, he said Jonathan Tarr. For me, I'll go for Tapsorba. Tapsorba. That's the one I wanted. Tapsorba for Leverkusen. He's a fantastic defender. He's quick. He's powerful. And he's a great tackle as well. I think you're frozen, mate. Hello? You're hey. frozen. Yeah, you was, uh, yeah, just start off. Uh, yeah, I got you. Uh, just start off with uh, where you're about to go because you're about to mention the other player that you yeah. would like to see them go after. Yeah, Tapsorba um, from uh, Leverkusen. Big, powerful guy. And he's quick. He's strong. And we do need pace at the back. That is the thing. We can get him at the back with pace, then believe you and me, I think he'd be a brilliant replacement for Jamal themselves. I really, really do. But like I said, are they going to let him go? Leverkusen going to let him go? I doubt it. I really much doubt it. Not really fighting for the title. Do you know what I mean? Because they want to win the title. They want to win that title. And the only way they're going to win it is keep all the best defenders. Do you know what I mean? Sapi is his name. Pira Sapi. He is a fantastic defender. He can't even get into the Leverkusen team at this moment in time. He's 36 foot and he's only 21 years of age. Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian international. He is fantastic. He really is. Okay. All right. Well, we will end the episode with I'm going to have you try to look into the future and how do you see the second half of this season going? Where do you see them placing? How well do they do in the champion? Or oh, oops, sorry, my bad. Didn't mean to make it a little tough on you. Uh, but where do you end up placing in the Premier League this season? Um, if we can get our players back and get in a couple more players in January, we're gonna give it a right go. Um, fighting again top four, even the fifth. But we're giving it a right go. And we've got to win, got to win games and keep our players fit. It's as simple as that. We're not a million, mile, million miles away from the top four, really five points off it. But Aston Villa's playing really well, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. City are going to find a way of winning the title. Also, I think going to bottle it again. Liverpool will be there, thereabouts. But for Newcastle, I think we can really go for it because if you look at the games we've got, we've got to play Spurs, Man City at home. Villa, Liverpool and Arsenal win. That is the thing. But if you look at the bottom, we've got to play. We've got to play Sheffield United at home, Burnley away, Luton at home, Forest at home soon. And um, we're going to be okay. But I still feel we get top four. We'll give it a go. we get the players back. And if I'm realistically honest, honest I think we're going to finish fifth. Hey, as long as you get some sort of UEFA competition, you can keep that money coming in. Yeah. That's just what's important, what's key. 100%, yep. and that's what we need to be. All right, well, hold you. I have nothing else for you. Okay. But this, I do want to give you this moment to talk about uh, your, uh, your YouTube channel, John Sinclair TV. Let people know a little bit about it. Plug yourself, how they can find you, all those things. Okay, thank you very much for having us on, Crook, first of all. Um, if you do subscribe to John Sinclair TV, the link's down there. And I do match previews, match reviews. I do player ratings. I do match reactions as well. I do opposition view. And I do the watch along every now and again. And I do little clips, match day vlogs, which I'll be doing tomorrow night versus Chelsea and I'll be there and I'll be behind the goal and giving little updates here and then and the fans reaction as well so yeah my channel's getting stronger I've got nearly 7,087 away from getting 7,000 subscribers so please do the horrible thing and just help me channel out do you know what I mean 
and I'll do Newcastle vlogs as well. Any Newcastle yeah. fans in America, hit the subscribe button. Let's go. Walsh Chain Gang once again. Show our guests some love. Thank you for coming on. Yes, yes. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Thank you. Well, Shady Gang, you know the vibes. Shady Gang. Shady Gang. Shady Gang.